and know her. Uh, Emma's going to read her report. The York River Sierra Club Environmental Justice Group has been partnering with the Peninsula of Virginia Organizing, uh, and uh, a lot of you here are involved uh, with them as well. Uh, they're a statewide grassroots advocacy group to fight for improving Hampton Roads transportation in Newport News. All of our citizens deserve reliable means of getting around. 22% of Newport News citizens ride the bus. A substantial number of our citizens are transit dependent. That is, they depend on public transit to get them to work, the VA hospital, the grocery store, and everywhere else they need to go. Hampton Roads Transportation is a public-private entity that serves the greater Hampton Roads area. It is not running well in Newport News. Riders have to deal with chronically late and missing buses and a system that doesn't have long enough hours or good connecting routes for cross-town travel, among other headaches. The EG Group, the Environmental Justice Group, has agreed to help by using Sierra Club resources to contact Sierra, Sierra Club members, encourage them to email, call city councilors, and attend city council meetings. Peninsula Virginia Organizing would like folks to come to the next city council meeting on Tuesday, November 26th at 7 p.m., 2400 Washington Avenue, Newport News, to show support for our bus riders who are on the front lines of this issue. You know, for people that are, that are uh, you know, kind of, and this is a socioeconomic thing too, they're dependent on, on these bus lines to get to work and not get fired and that kind of stuff. This, this, is, a, this is like one of the top issues uh, on their plate. Uh, members of the York, Sierra, the York River Sierra Club Environmental Justice Group also supported Peninsula Virginia organizing on Tuesday, November the 12th, when we, showed, when we had a candlelight vigil at Newport News City Center for undocumented friends and neighbors. That was the dock part, so yeah. it was in there. It was a horrible night in terms of weather. You know, we still had about 15 people out there. And a matter of fact, we couldn't keep the candles lit. It was so bad. Um, the Supreme Court uh, heard arguments for the Dreamers on that, that day that we were out there, so it was kind of neat. And uh, the issue that I'm involved with, uh, and I just fell into it by, you know, sort of by accident when uh, I was, you know, we were looking at air quality uh, in Newport News, and specifically downtown Newport News. And if you, it's really kind of funny if you look at, go out to the websites and you look at the maps for like health problems in Virginia, and you look at downtown Newport News, and it's like red, you know, so there's a lot of health issues there. And you go and you look at air quality maps, you know, that the DEQ puts out, it's all green, you know? And so my question was, well, how are they actually monitoring air quality in downtown Newport News? And I thought it was a very simple question that turned out to be a really, really kind of long, complicated journey. And the answer is they don't. You know, I couldn't believe it. But there, there is the, uh, you know, they have these, um, the real good air quality monitoring stations. Uh, the, the DEQ, Department of Environmental Quality in Virginia, they have one in NASA, out of NASA. The other one is over in Chesapeake. So you've got the, you've got a kind of like a perfect storm of polluters downtown. You've got the shipyard, the coal terminal, the mine plant, you know, and, and the, the roads and stuff. Downtown Newport News, and they're all basically self-reporting. And you can't get data from them. And we've been working with, as part of this, we've been working with uh, Old Dominion and CNU. And uh, they, they, ODU has been really looking at it for quite a while. And uh, the data, they can get sporadic data from, from uh, the DEQ, but it just doesn't make any sense. You know, it's just sporadic. There's no, you know, you can't really draw any conclusions for it. So uh, we looked at the cost that it would take to put uh, a really good sensitive, um, you know, uh, monitor, monitors up, and they were just too, they're just outrageously expensive to do that. But we've looked at uh, a little device called Purple Air. Uh, had anybody heard of those before? Okay, well, it's, it's really kind of a grassroots air quality monitoring uh, 
uh, system. So for $250, you can buy one of these. And we've been working with the Southeast Care Coalition, and we're encouraging other people to kind of join in uh, and to uh, purchase these things and start putting them out and form a network of these monitors downtown. You look at some of the schools and other areas to at least start getting some rudimentary air quality data, and we're hoping that we'll be able to build the grassroots momentum on that and put some pressure uh, on the DEQ and the EPA to actually do some serious monitoring uh, of the air quality in downtown Newport News. Any, any questions? What was it called again? Uh, this is called Purple Air. Purple Air. Permiata. <clears throat> but you can go out right now and you can actually uh, go to their site and you can start looking at uh, the data here. You can actually also go out to the DEQ site and you'll see it's all free. <laughs> <laughs> is that merging uh, uh, particulate? Is that what it's meant Yes, for yeah. But it's fairly rudimentary, but it's, we, we want to be able to um, start building, because uh, it's all about political pressure, right? Start building some, some pressure, uh, you know, lo locally, daily press, uh, and uh, to, to really push, it, it, this will not stand up to a rigorous sort of scientific study, but it's kind of like the uh, canary in the coal mine thing. So we get enough of these monitored in, in different places and we can actually make a, a, you know, a statement. And we want to work through CNU and uh, ODU um, because you know, some people when they hear Sierra Club, they go you know, like running the other, other way. So. Uh, so we're, we're hoping that will lend a lot of credibility to the effort. Mm -hmm. So if you have any, uh, if, if you're in a situation where, you know, if you're interested in, in being a participant, uh, let me know because we're having another January meeting and we're thinking about like approaching churches and other groups because $250. Sir? Is that something that the Sierra Club can host on their site? About this program that they have to put on their site? That would be great. It would seem to me that if you had a, uh, a website to connect anybody that's got one of those, you, you yep. have people coming to your site or their the manufacturer site, the Sierra Club site, to be directed to if you want to if you want to join the network, the monitoring network here, join the site and up, upload your information. That would require somebody to build such a site. Yeah, that would be great. And, and that's exactly what we're trying to do with, uh, you know, with, with CNU uh, and ODU and, and get a network of these things that covers uh, downtown Newport News. And also, uh, we're going to put one at our church. Of course, we're, you know, not downtown, but at least that'll provide a baseline. You know, here the air is this quality here, and it's, you know, this quality down there. So. If you have some more questions, we'll, we'll take them thank, after thank the Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Bill. Great.